Hello, I'm Matthew Winkler. I am a 3D modeler for Titanic Honor and Glory, and I'm here for Titanic University to teach you how I model for the game that we are creating. In this section that I created a very long time ago, so I'm going to try to remember as I'm watching the video, actually, oh, I say that word a lot, so I'm going to say it a lot as I go through this, is a third class section on F deck. There are no photographs of it, so hopefully during the course of this video, I'm going to explain to you how we're able to create it. It's on F deck section G. Now, if you had a third class ticket on Titanic, uh, you would be, in this area, you'd be a third class single male or traveling with a group of men to the new world. Um, on your ticket or on your immigration card or your um, little ticket of after your of disembarkation after you went through the inspection queue it would say you're in uh, G and then a number that's because your cabin would be in section G number I think 63 or 64 third class did not have deck numbers and then cabin numbers they were organized by sections so this is why this is third class section G on F deck which can get confusing but um, the sh what's actually happening here first is to get a sense of our bearings and location, you can see this big white plane with a bunch of lines. That's the shape of Titanic, and those lines are allowing me to know where the frames are of the ship, kind of like a map, a guide. And I brought in parts of Scotland Road above. You can see right there, I'm, I'm, I looks like I'm making a watertight bulkhead in the door for watertight bulkhead D, I think it is. Oh, Scotland Road just jumped in there, there we go. Yeah, Scotland Road is above on E deck, so I have to bring in landmarks from the areas that are completed already to work on spaces surrounding it so they fit and match up with the game. And here you, I'm bringing in a door frame. Now luckily, while we don't have photographs of much of Titanic, nor her sister ship, Olympic, of the nitty-gritty spaces like the third class cabins and corridors but we have enough photographs of third class on other ships at the time period we know what their design looked like so we can base it off of that and even more luckily um, the paneling the door frames all those little components uh, can be copied over throughout each section of the ship so third class section G the, the paneling and the style matches their class section M and O and Q. So you'll see me copy and bring in a bunch of, right there, this is, I'm copying in and modifying a little bit that black little um, floorboard um, molding, which is actually called a deck cant. It holds the, the, the walls for the cabin there. Uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's a wood, it's a teak, I believe, um, mo floor molding and they painted it black because it gets kind of dirty. Um, right there, I'm co I think I just copied some bulkheads, which I'm going to modify there, model modifying the, the deck cant again. And I will use that deck cant as a guide along with the cornice right there, which I'm now taking a section cut of in SketchUp. I, yeah, I work in Google SketchUp. Um, and then it goes to Maya and with Kyle, Kyle Hudak, who m modifies it. Um, a, a couple other modelers work on Titanic Honor and Glory 2, not Titanic Honor and Glory 2, the sequel, also with us, uh, but then usually they do it in SketchUp, and then Kyle takes the models, convert it, converts them into the, the other 3D modeling program known as Maya, and does some magic before it goes into the Unreal Engine. So what you're seeing here is the game before all the magic, you're seeing the behind the scenes, behind the curtain. You're seeing the, the rough, rough Titanic um, just before you're seeing the evolution. This is before the light, the lighting and the shadows are added, before steel is made to look like steel. It's just a texture. There's no reflection. There's no bump maps, none of that fancy stuff, which I can't explain because I don't know how it works. So if I don't, if I don't understand how it works, it must be, it, it, it must be some sort of, some sort of sorcery. Um, so, okay, I, I work in um, kind of a 
kind of a standard method. I, I like to create um, the floor area first, which I, I did with bringing in the, the guide of Titanic with all those lines there. Then I create some, um, I copy some cabins, which I did with the deck hands and some pan paneling, see there. And then I work my way up. So right now you see, or you did see, um, some of the overhead beams, which hold together the structure of the ship. And they come in, I copied them from E-Deck above. They're called channel beams. They're structural members that run, um, horizontal, oh God. If, I'm going to get yelled at by my lack of nautical engineering terms. Um, but they hold together the ship. <laughs> they're, they're not transverse beams, but that's a girder right there. That's another um, structural member for the ship. And I copied that also from EDEC. Um, so yeah, I like, and I, I grouped them together in their own little um, layers so that I can visually like remove a layer so I can see through all the the hull um, elements I can remove the doors all the movable objects in a completed model I can remove all the electrical elements like um, light bulbs and electrical distribution boxes I can remove all the pipes then I can bring them all back if I need to so I can see through it so a completed model will have tons of nonsense of furniture and everything but a model that I need, and if I need to like quickly look through it I can just turn off a bunch of different layers. Um, if anyone's ever worked in AutoCAD or any modeling program, it's essentially the same. Now, each one of those deck beams, channel beams you see right there, they're L-shaped and they're long. Um, they're, uh, you, you'd see them in any type of skyscraper, um, a, a parking garage now. It, it hasn't changed that much in a hundred years, but every single one of them in SketchUp, they're called a component. And that means they're a group of um, lines, a group of points, a group of faces, of faces being three or, oh, there's my desktop that just popped in, a group of, of a grouping of three or more um, points which create a, a face. And because they're grouped together, you see each one is the exact same of another one, but because a group can be turned into a component, and then if I go into that component and start modifying the component, it will modify every single one of the other components of that component in the model, um, which is very useful. Say if I have to suddenly change a, a, a channel, the beam. I think I'm removing. Why am I removing? I'm, yes, I'm removing Titanic. I don't need her entire 882 length hull anymore, so I'm gonna cut her away and just keep this section on F-Deck. But if I, or let's get a better example, let's say I have the same light bulb as a component, I can just go in and edit a little bit of that light bulb, and instead of going around to light bulb after light bulb after light bulb after light bulb, I can just go into one light bulb, and all the light bulbs throughout the entire model will change. It doesn't work throughout different models saved in my folders, in my files. It has to, it just, it, it only works in this file. Um, which sometimes can get can get frustrating since I have multiple versions of the same model saved, and I also try to use the same components in different files. For example, if I work on a sec section of second class that had that's on F deck, I will want to use the same beams here and often the same wooden bulkhead components. So now this is. This is the watertight bulkhead that unfortunately doesn't go any higher than E deck. So right here, this is, oh, there it goes up the E deck. I'm bringing it up to F deck right here using a section cut, a section plane, making a section cut. And I want to make sure that bulkhead goes right to the perfect, right to the top of the channel beams. Now, originally when I made this video, I worked on this space from scratch, and I did it in five hours. It was a five-hour day. Um, I didn't finish the whole section of F deck. There, I'm making more. There's the component right there. See, I'm actually in. Oh God, I got. I got to work on not saying the word actually. But I, 
that's one component and I just copied it over so if I go into this grouping of um, cabins see how I'm moving that door frame but it's moving the door frame and the other components too and I know that they are the same because I have two monitors in my setup so I have archivals and photographs on one monitor and I work on the other one oop there's some deck plans <laughs> I guess I needed to look closely at my section G I think I'm doing some measurements probably I'm, I'm very I'm tedious I like to make sure that everything lines up perfectly and I don't need to so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm measuring the distance between the very small cramped compartments that these third-class passengers would have so that this texture that I'm applying um, it's known in Olympic and Titanic as match sticking or tongue and groove uh, you'll see that prominently on the bridge of Titanic her the front of the um, navigating bridge was tongue and groove the top of the top of the bridge was tongue and groove um, the outside of these panel of these bulkheads of these walls excuse me this is a paneling style right there which is known as rail and style that's the most basic run of the mill which is funny because it's milled uh, paneling which is utilized throughout Titanic and Olympic and Britannic and most of the steamship lines in the 19 teens through the 20s James Cameron's Titanic copied that um, style quite um, almost perfectly for his motion picture and, he'd, and, you, and you could see it in his third class spaces and he had it right because you had um, I believe Jack and Fabrizio's cabin which was actually G60 which would not be in section G which we're working at I think 60 would be in the section in front of uh, forward of the section so I think F it would be actually it should be F60 so He's close, but not correct. But their cabin, you would in, in these cabins down here on F deck for third class for the men, which are the some of the cheapest cabins you can get. You would have the paneling would be this basic rail and style, and the interior um, makeup of the pa of the cabin would have the matchsticking or the tongue and groove paneling. So that's what you see here, which is nice for me because the textured paneling is less um, it, it doesn't it, it takes up less computer size less vertices less polygons less thinking for a computer less work less for me to do too there's some interesting cabins in down here in this section there's the deck plans again coming in for us to examine oh Titanic and later Olympic this area was later named Section J on Olympic. Some of the cabins, which I was mentioning, you can see Section G, which had a big J there for Olympic. But some of these cabins, they they were they had men, they had room for. Oh yeah, I remember I remember getting frustrated because the water tape bulkhead was too far forward, and I had to bring it half some. But some of these cabins had occupancy for two men or two passengers and there are two cabins here which had occupancy up to 10 10 passengers would fit in some of these cabins and you'll you'll see me create them this is the biggest cabin the, these are the biggest cabins that were on Titanic there were no open berth um, dormitories for third-class passengers aboard Titanic which is a little a little funny, a little ironic, because you would think that there were. Um, it's kind of a myth, a kind of a fable, that third class men were down in their down in dormitories. Third class were kept as cattle as steerage, but no, they had they had their own cabins. The average third class cabin was probably around oh, I need to actually take an average, two or four, but these these big ones were ten. Ten 10 passengers each. I think it's right about there. But on Olympic, there were dormitories for, for third-class men in the bow. And Britannic eventually 
was planned to have dormitories again for third class male passengers in the bow. So they eliminated that dormitory style um, quarters on Titanic and they brought it back for Britannic, but it never it never happened because Britannic well World War One took her took her out of service. So I'm I create the component and then I modify the component. I make it unique and then I modify it. And I line up my overhead girders. Do 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 there's a lot of fine tuning. There we go with the components. Just modify one and they all they all shift with me, which is very nice. Very satisfying. Makes everything a lot easier. Makes it go by a lot a lot faster. So there are a lot of cabins on Titanic that we have to create. And often there are a lot that I can just copy and paste over and over and over again and that's the whole that's why I try to teach you a little quick and dirty lesson about how components work in SketchUp and then the same thing can somewhat be applied to Unreal Engine when it's imported in um, you can just copy the the whole cabin it's all its makeup its furniture and then paste it to another section and there you go you got it but there are cabins which because they didn't want to have any wasted space um, wasted space meant that you were losing money or you could have stored something in that section it, wasted space was not good on board a ship it's not good aboard a ship today either you definitely want it's it's valuable real estate so you'll find some very oddly shaped cabins aboard Titanic so right here this this cabin this aft starboard cabin. Well, I guess we're gone now, but it just it, it makes a, a, a bizarre L shape around um, a coal chute and an ash hoist. An ash hoist. An ash. This I can't say that even one time slowly. An ash hoist um, removes its um, the ashes that come out from the boiler room when you obviously when you burn coal and such. Ash is a residue. And certain times you cannot actually, very good, there's that word again, ex, um, remove, the, usually the ash from the boilers is just pumped, pushed out into the, into the ocean as the ship is sailing because they really cared about the environment back then. But I believe in ports, they couldn't do that. So they had ash hoists to remove the ashes. I could be incorrect on that. I'm, I'm not, I am nowhere near, um, qualified to give a lesson in Titanic's boiler rooms nor her engines I'd have to study that up first and talk to some people but that's what I believe the ash hoists were for um, I know that they they were they would raise them up from the boiler rooms and there'd be a door a gang or a gang word a gangway door on the side of the ship and they could remove them in a, in a little baggage but these little you see these awkwardly shaped right these are um more parts of the hull i'm deleting rivets delete the rivets there are coal chutes alongside here too and they're just jutting out like a, th a th three foot by three foot rectangular sh um trunk and they're all throughout F deck. You'll see, you can see them in photographs of the third class dining saloon. There's one right there in the center of the screen. And there are doors, all little little rectangular doors along the side of F deck on the hull of Titanic. You can barely see them, and they would open them up while the ship was at port, and that's how they would scoop the coal into the ship, uh, often by conveyor belts, sometimes by hand. I think I think um, Leviathan had a conveyor belt me method. That depends on the company and the dock, um, but that's one of the main reasons why these ships were painted black, because the coal dust would get them so dirty. If you take a, a if you take a look at Britannic during World War II, she got quite dirty. Her white hull got so dusty around the coal, the coal chutes in the doors. There are many interior cabins for third class. There are many interior cabins in general. Um, one of the methods here to make sure that 
they are properly ventilated so that any um, foul air, just spent air, warm air, that needs to be exhausted, which rises up, is exhausted out, they don't act they don't close off the cabin totally you s you can see hopefully right um it's i guess we're going to work on the floor when i want to talk about the ceiling but that's okay the the cornice molding which runs there it is right there horizontally through the screen the cornice molding um which usually in first class and second class closes off which goes which is in the top uh, it's kind of like a crown molding it hides many of the cables and the wires to provide electricity on the steward call buttons. You push a button and it rings a steward call box 50 feet away in a pantry somewhere. You don't need that thick of a cornice in third class because there's just a light bulb in their cabin. But in third class, it completely goes up to the, the deck above, the ceiling above, to enclose a space to provide privacy third class it only goes up to the bottom of the deck beam so you have about nine inches or so of open space between the top of the cornice and the bottom of the deck above that provides air and light to go through from cabin to corridor to cabin uh, sometimes there is a mesh uh, that could be installed a wire grill that sometimes there'd be nothing at all like here uh, it just, or there'd be supports usually there if it's a smaller if it's a higher deck like on D deck or E deck F deck is very is a very sh it's a shorter deck it's eight feet eight and a half feet high F deck uh, E deck is six inches taller D deck is the highest it's ten and a half feet tall whoo it's a tall it's a tall deck but third class did not have totally private cabins for that reason first class and second class did but they for the inside cabins often had um little sc um, screens at the bottom of their at the at the bulkhead wall at the bottom of the, around the baseboard kind of like venetian panels you can which provided air to flow through, but not light, not visibility. And the best method for these panels to hide, to provide more privacy, there's the cornice, um, you would have a bunk or a bed be right next to or right adjacent to these panels. So the air flow would go underneath the, pa underneath the bunk but the light wouldn't be able to penetrate so much under the bunk. Eyesight, eye lines wouldn't go through the underneath the bunk, and it pro would provide the uh, necessary air. And of course, first class and most of second class had direct heating trunks and exhaust trunks. There's some more cornice work, more cornice work. You can, there's a lot, oh, there's a weird cabin. Here we go with the weird, awkward layout of some of the cabins. Seldom the Titanic and Olympic utilize angled walls that weren't perpendicular, such as this one right here. Perpendicular, by the way, means that two lines um, are 90 degrees from each other or something like that. I don't know. It's some math term. You can go back to geom geometry lessons. I don't know. I'm not your teacher. There's no school right now. This is, I'm recording this during the middle of the crisis. I don't know. I don't know math. I only know some math. I have cheat sheets for all the mathematical formulas that are required to Titanic. Um, one of them happens to be the the distance between those panels, those panels I talked about right there, the, the rail and style panels. The rail um, are the horizontal, because the rail, like the railings of a fence are horizontal, and the styles are the vertical posts, I think. God, I hope so, or I'll feel dumb. But the styles, there's multiple, since the panels can have um, multiple panels, 
and then there's multiple rails in them. I want to make sure that the, the, the panels are the same width. It's just it's pleasing to the eye, and all, more often than not, that's what they did. So I have a little cheat sheet because I know that I know the width of the average rail, um, three and three quarters of an inch. Um, I have that multiplied by the number of rails, and I can quickly look up the number of rails if I know, like for example, there's oh there's five panels. That means there's four rails. So four rails. That means four rails equals 15 inches. So I can just take my overall length from the edge of the panels to the panels, subtract 15 inches from that, and divide it by the five panels, and I can get the perfect measurement of my width of each of each panel, and that's how I can get them to be equal. Now, I said in the beginning, I like to work from the from the floor, the deck up, and one of the last things I do, I add the ventilation and the piping and the lighting. And so I'm wrapping this up because I was working for five hours, and I wanted to see what I could accomplish in five hours. And here comes a big old ventilation trunk. Now there's no ventilation plans of the RMS Titanic, of course, that are known to exist. There are many plans of Titanic that are not known to exist, but that's because there are many plans of her sister ship, RMS Olympic. And many of those are just copies because Olympic and Titanic were sister ships and they were designed to be able to be built rapidly in succession. So oh, there was a little bit of the ventilation plan that just popped in there. Uh, my point is that they didn't need to make unique plans for each ship. They did for Britannic, but not for Titanic. There's no reason to just duplicate a, a huge mammoth plan for the piping or the ventilation um, when the two ships were close together. They did have to, however, if they changed the section on Titanic or Olympic, create a new plan based on that section, based on that layout. And so you will find an oh, a, a individual plan for the mail hold for, that says mail hold 401 because they redesigned the mail hold, for instance. Or when they redesigned Olympics forward space for her crew, you can see they'll be detailed. They'll show the light, the light bulb locations, the ventilation locations, the bed locations, because it's a complete redesign. So they didn't want to change. They didn't change their big plans. They just quickly drew up new plans of spaces. Um, more often than not, that's what it seems like they did. So I didn't throw. I didn't put in all furniture in this except for little cupboards, which are at the end of. The corridors uh, like I said before they didn't want they didn't want to waste space so at the end of corridors were the places for lin linen lockers but you would find bunks here that would barely fit anybody I would not have a good time in third class spaces or any beds for that matter I'm six foot three and the beds here are often not even six feet in length but yeah, this was done in about, there's a linen locker right there. This was done in five hours from scratch. It's third class, section G. It's a good number of cabins. It's a decent amount of space. Um, I, it's it's an interesting spot. It's, it's <laughs> there's not much else to say about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little kind of insider look of how we model for Titanic Honor Glory and how we create the Titanic. Thanks for watching.